So those are the dynamics of the epidemic as it stands right now here at April 21st, 2020. The question that we have to address right now is where did this uh, coronavirus come from? Where did the SARS-CoV-2 virus come from? It turns out that the coronavirus is not uncommon in the human population. Uh, there are a number of coronaviruses that cause disease, and here's a summary of them. Uh, there's these four, one, two, three, four, and they have fancy names, HCOV, NL63, uh, 229E, and so forth. These four have been in the human population for a long time, and they cause a disease which is quite mild, and literally it's one of the disease-causing organisms that causes the common cold. Uh, the other one being respiratory syncytial virus, and the most common one is the rhinovirus. So these are not necessarily dangerous, and they've been in the human population for a long time. But there are other diseases that are caused by coronaviruses that are very severe. In fact, there's another SARS I mentioned earlier, this one, SARS-CoV. That was the first one, and that outbreak occurred in 2003 and 2004, again, starting in China and then spreading worldwide. But it didn't really break out as bad as SARS-CoV-2 has. And then there's another one that came later in 2012, another uh, coronavirus that uh, hit in uh, the Middle East primarily, and it's called MERS, M-E-R-S. And the interesting thing is that this uh, coronavirus is actually, the, that epidemic is still going on, although it hasn't been quite uh, as bad and certainly didn't make as much news as the original SARS or this one. So the question then is, how did these, did these give rise to our current SARS-CoV-2 or did it come from somewhere else? Well, the question is also, where did these viruses come from originally? Turns out that all of these coronaviruses have very, very close relatives to coronaviruses that infect bats and rodents. And this one in particular, for example, came from bats. This one came from bats. These two came from rodents. And all the remaining ones came from bats. So our guess is initially that SARS-CoV-2 probably came from somewhere from a bat. However, it gets more complicated because the bats don't typically give the humans the disease directly. For example, this one came to humans not just through bats, but, but also through alpacas. And this one came from rodents through cows into humans. Now these others we'll talk about here in a moment, but the point is that where the exact origin of this virus is is unclear, but it's important to know for a couple of different reasons. First of all, we want to know its biological properties, and therefore determining its biological properties, it helps to know what's most closely related to it. And the other point is, if we can understand where it came from, then we can get a sense for whether or not this is going to happen again. Is SARS-CoV-2 going to be something we have to deal with year after year now? Or is it something that this is a one-off event, one-off evolutionary event, and we don't necessarily have to worry about this exact uh, virus attacking us again? So that's what we're going to look at now. We're going to look at specifically where these things actually arose. And this is what we know about the two severe coronaviruses so far, the SARS-CoV, which is the caused the 2003-2004 epidemic, and MERS-CoV, which caused the 2012 epidemic. These, like I said, are diseases that came from bats. Both of them, the SARS and MERS, both came from bats. And in fact, the bat you're looking at here, this picture, is a bat uh, that has a coronavirus which is extremely similar to human beings. It's, a, it's an intermediate horseshoe bat. And in the case of SARS, it came through these creatures. This is a, a, a palm civet. And what's interesting, this particular civet uh, is uh, something that uh, is sold in markets in China, and that's probably how it started. This, this, the SARS uh, originated here through this civet. And it got into the human population, but then was spread human to human. So it defines this disease as what we call a zoonotic. And there this term is defined here for you. Zoonotic disease is any disease that gets into the human population but comes from a from another uh, uh, animal. And the same thing happened with MERS. MERS started with bats, but eventually uh, got into these dromedary camels. Dromedary camels, of course, are very uh, commonly used in the Middle East, and it was probably from these camels that humans got it, and then it was transferred again human to human. So given that this is what happens with coronaviruses in general, and especially the two most recent severe viruses, we're expecting SARS-CoV-2 which is similar to this genetically, I'll show you the evidence of that shortly, we expect there to be some sort of intermediate host, but the problem is what is the intermediate host? Is it civets, is it dromedary camels, or is it something else? So this next part of the story is, to me anyway, very astonishing. It's, it's, and it shows how kind of luck sometimes plays a role in science. 
It turns out that before the SARS-CoV-2 epidemic started, somebody had discovered that these cute little creatures called pangolins have a coronavirus and that's closely related or seemingly closely related to the original SARS-CoV that we had in 2003-2004. So another group very recently uh, decided to take a look at this in detail and this group here by, uh, led by Zhang uh, did a genetic analysis and built these evolutionary trees. Now these evolutionary trees are things we've seen before. These show the nodes and the breakpoints leading to different lineages. For example, here's the node times going to the right. Here's the most the earliest common ancestor of these groups which split into two groups this group down here and this group up here. The group down here includes the human MERS virus that I showed you that causes severe disease in humans and then the, this group up here contains the other SARS-CoV including SARS-CoV-2 and that's this one here this is the SARS-CoV this is one of the isolates that uh, was isolated from the original 2003-2004 epidemic of SARS-CoV these magenta colored ones are isolates that come from patients in different areas of the current SARS-CoV-2. So you can see evolutionarily they're closely related to SARS-CoV. If you follow all of these things back to this node, this is the node uh, that connects them genetically. All the rest of these are primarily bat-CoVs. Uh, they're they're SARS uh, uh, types of diseases or co uh, coronaviruses that are found in bats. This one right here, this orange one, that's the pangolin. That's the, the one that infects the, these little pangolins. And then this one, this green one, that's a bat. That's a bat uh, coronavirus. And look how closely related these are now. If I were to ask you a question on the test, is this bat coronavirus more closely related to the pangolin, to the other bats, or to the human uh, SARS-CoV-2, you should see, coming back and following back to this node, that the bat and the rest of the human SARS-CoV-2 are very closely related, more closely related than the SARS-CoV-2 or the bat is to anything else on the chart. But notice the next is the pangolin. There's the, uh, right there is the node that gives us the pangolins and it's what they're calling the SARS-CoV-2 group. Now this analysis here is the entire genome of the, of the virus. This is looking at one particular uh, gene. It's an it's a RNA polymerase, RNA dependent RNA polymerase, and you get a similar picture. The pangolin uh, DNA is very similar to the bat and human SARS-CoV-2 DNA. So that's part of the story. It appears anyway from this analysis that pangolins carry a coronavirus that is genetically very, very similar to SARS-CoV-2 and this particular bat SARS. So that tells us we should be looking at pangolins and, pang and that disease that infects pangolins. And here is part of the analysis also done by Zhang's group that looks at one particular protein. and That protein is a critical protein in the uh, disease infecting cells. It actually is part of a uh, protein that binds to a receptor called ACE2. And I'm going to show you the details of that uh, when we get into the pathology of this. But here, what we're looking at here are the original, what are called beta uh, uh, coronaviruses. That's the general group of coronaviruses that ours are in. All of these, except the very top one, are SARS-CoV-2. This one is SARS-CoV. There's the pangolin. There's that the bat that is closely related to the human SARS-CoV-2. And then here are a bunch of others that are uh, associated with bat SARS and so forth. Now this one here, the original SARS, is used as a reference sequence. And you see these different letters here. Each one of these letters represents a given amino acid. Now you've seen this before. This, this is the amino acid sequence. There, right there, is the 440th amino acid, 450, and so forth. So we're looking at only a portion of the protein. And the reason they're focusing on this portion of the protein is that this is the part of the protein that has a domain, a portion, that binds to the ACE2 receptor to get inside human cells. And they block that section out here in gray. Now, look at all of this, and you can see all these dots are saying that anything that has a dot is equal to the reference sequence. Here's the original SARS. Uh, and this then is showing that everything there has a cysteine. So all, that, all those dots, every single thing on this chart has the exact same amino acid at that spot. But notice here, in this region, there's quite a bit of variation, especially in the bat SARS. There's a lot of differences. What I want to do is to compare all of the human SARS-CoV-2s. If you look at them, they're all identical through the gray. They're all exactly identical. Uh, this one here follows back to this pangolin one. Now you notice the pangolin is also extremely similar. There's only one difference in all of this uh, uh, 
a hundred or so nucleotides is only, or sorry, not nucleotides, amino acids is only one difference. Now compare that to the BAT-CoV, that one that evolutionarily is more closely related to the human SARS-CoV-2 than it is to the pangolin. And you notice there's a lot more variation. In this critical region, it's quite different. Now the parts that they wanted to focus on in particular are these regions, these orange sections. One, two, three, four, five orange sections. So the reason they're focusing on these orange sections is because these are the exact amino acid residues that bind to that ACE2 receptor. And the reason why that's important is because that's how the virus gets into the cells. So the method or the mechanism by which these SARS-CoV-2 get into cells critically depends on what amino acids are at these orange sites. Now, compare all of these human SARS-CoV-2s to the pangolin-CoV. And if you look down through here, at each one of those orange sections, there's a dot. Every single orange section has a dot, which means this, the pangolin and the human sequences are identical. But compare that to the bad sequence. Now remember, the bad sequence is similar, more, more similar to the human sequence than it is to the pangolin. And you notice that that's the same, but that one's different, that one's different, that one's different, that one's different. So four of the five key sections are different in the pangolin, I'm sorry, different in the uh, bat SARS than it is in, in the humans, whereas the pangolin and the humans are identical. So here's a summary of what Zhang and Al found, uh, found out. If you look just at the whole genome, all of the genes together of the, of the various disease organisms infecting humans, that uh, particular BAT, uh, which is uh, SARS, which is designated RATG or RATG13, and then the pangolin covirus, coronavirus, you'll see that the human and the BAT uh, sequences are very, very similar, almost identical. They're 96% similar. And the pangolin is different. However, the pangolin is very similar to the human as well. It's about 91% similar. It's just that the bat is more so. It's 96%. But in the key region, in that region that's the binding site for the ACE1 receptor, you can see the humans and the pangolins are more closely related than, the, uh, than they are to the, to the bat. There's another part of the story, which I'm not going to get into in a great uh, amount of detail, but there's one particular sequence in the human uh, protein that, uh, is a, that ha catalyzes a particular reaction that neither the bat nor the pangolin has. That's something that we'll talk about maybe later, but uh, at this point it really doesn't matter that much because all this evidence is suggesting that the SARS-CoV-2 came from bats through pangolins into humans. At least that's what appears to be uh, what the hypothesis uh, is suggesting based on these data. And so that's what you're finding. If you look, if you go online and you see, where, if you ask the question, where do these uh, where did this, did this disease come from? Here, this, con this picture uh, comes from a, a U.S. government site, an NIH site, and it shows, again, bats to pangolins, then to humans, and then now it's, of course, being transmitted human to human. So there's other evidence here that's important, and uh, this is not evidence I'm going to show you the details of because we just don't have time to go through all of it, but I just want to mention it. First of all, uh, a group uh, that was led by uh, 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 Anderson uh, studied the details of the DNA sequence of the SARS-CoV-2 and compared it to lab strains of SARS-CoV-2 and came to the conclusion that the current uh, strain of SARS-CoV-2 that's infecting human beings is almost certainly not from a lab. So it isn't either an intentional, uh, there's no evidence anyway, that it's an intentionally released uh, virus and there's no evidence that it was a mistake that somebody in the lab sort of left open and let it out. So there's good evidence that it's not a human-caused sort of, uh, of uh, virus. And the other couple things that support that, first of all, almost all or most of the cases that were originally uh, discovered, going all the way back to the earliest cases, the earliest COVID-19 uh, cases that were treated, were all in China, and, and most of them were associated with this open seafood market in, in uh, uh, Huanan uh, in Wuhan, China. And so that tends to indicate that that market is probably the source. That's probably where it, where it uh, started. And the other thing that's interesting is that the genetic analysis, if you look at, at the, uh, how it is that the variations that we see in SARS-CoV-2 compared to the most common, most recent ancestor of it uh, in, the, in the bat, it looks very much like that uh, virus hit uh, the U.S., uh, sorry, the uh, human population uh, sometime in November or early December 2019. And that fits with the earliest cases, the very earliest cases in China were at that time, were also found at that time. So all this evidence is pointing to the conclusion that the SARS-CoV-2 originated probably in this market in China 
and they were selling pangolins for meat and the people who bought those pangolins in unwittingly ingested the virus and became infected and then the virus uh, either evolved immediately there or was already pre-adapted to go human to human after that point. 